Poll question, would you rather win the NIT or lose in the opening round of the NCAA tournament? Why don't we ask Steve Alford, the New Mexico head coach. Hey, coach, how are you? I'm doing good, Dan. How are you? I'm good. How's your jumper? <laughs> it's still pretty good. <laughs> are you still the best shooter on your team? I'll, I'll take the shooting. Uh, if you tell me i got to move one step right or left, <laughs> then I'm, I'm out of that game. If you had a team free throw contest, I'm, I'm still, I'm still gonna, I'm still competitive enough that I'm betting on me there too. Out of a hundred, better be ninety nine or more. If I'm gonna beat you, I, I gotta know, I gotta go ninety nine or a hundred. That's that's what wow. I thought. I don't mean I'm gonna do it, but <laughs> I'll be upset if I don't do that. It won't be a very fun day if I don't do that. All right, here's our poll question: Would you rather lose opening round NCAA or win the NIT? NIT this year, and we are in the opening round, so uh, I hope we're advancing past the opening. Well, round. I know, but let's let's just remove ourselves from the tournament to you know this week. And and if you were just looking at this from a coaching perspective, you could get in the tournament, lose opening round, or your team wins the NIT. Uh, that's difficult. I you know I think you work all year long. Um, you work so hard as a staff and team to get into the NCAA tournament. So you know I would hope that the work through five or six months, that's what you're trying to get to. Nobody wants to lose in the opening round of any tournament, but your your goal at the beginning of the season is trying to make that NCAA tournament. Did your family fill out a bracket? That I don't know. I, I don't know if they have yet or not. But do if they, they normally? Have, I don't, if they have, I don't know. I don't want to know what <laughs> what they've done or, or how far they got us, or if anywhere. But uh, I don't usually want to know any of those things. Last time you brought up winning a national championship to your team, that you won one as a player. Yeah, I think this was um, – well, I definitely did it at Manchester, uh, my first job. <laughs> uh, I had a team that won 31 in a row, so uh, I definitely brought it up there. And um, I would say this year, not so much as a national championship, but uh, New Mexico's never been to the – Sweet 16, so our fans spend a lot of time talking about getting to that level, and we really haven't talked about a national championship, but we have talked probably more this year than any other year with a team that I've had at New Mexico that we have the capability of advancing. doesn't mean we're going to, but let's not sell ourselves short because we just we feel like we can play with anybody. We've played a top-five schedule all year long and won 29 games, and we've been in one of the better leagues in the country, and won the league and the tournament. So I, I feel like this team has what it takes to advance. But as you know, when you get in the national tournament, you have to play well. But you talked about a top five schedule. You win 29 games in your number three seed. Why? Well, I don't know. I, you know, I, I know the committee, Dan, has a, an impossible job. Um, I would hope. I'd heard a special the other day that we weren't in the talks for um, a two seed, which that would surprise me because if you look at our body of work, there's not a two seed that had any better body of work than what we had. If you can look at RPI, you can look at strength of schedule, you can look at the league we play in. Our league was ranked one or two all year long. So you're talking about top two, top two league in the country, and we won both term, both the league and the tournament. Won the league by two games. Um, had the most top 100 RPI wins in the country. Nobody else came close to it. I think Duke was two or three back from us of that. So our resume was very good. Now, if you're asking me, would I rather be a two seed in Dayton or a three seed in Salt Lake? Um, we would obviously rather stay out west to where our fans can travel and see us. And you got a good fan base there. Uh, I, I think it's a very underrated market when it comes to college basketball. But if I'm looking at your career, you know, you, you've never been in those major markets. You almost seem to like being not the underdog, but you like being sort of on the periphery of the madness here. Is that Does that play to your strengths? Well, I hope so. I, I think I've just always been a college basketball guy in a college basketball type town. And this is the largest town I've been in. Uh, Albuquerque, we're almost a, a population of a million, but uh, we have no pro teams in our state. Um, UNM and especially local basketball is uh, it's the main attraction and it's the show. And we do, we have phenomenal fans. We just played championship game in Vegas in the Thomas and Mack Center and 
probably had twice as many fans as, as UNLV did. Uh, our fans travel, our fans support us, and it is a phenomenal atmosphere in the pit. But the Dan Patrick Show should do something live in the pit. Wow. You know, I would not want to do that to the program. might be a negative for you, Coach. We could get you on probation <laughs> with all the stuff we do. I could help. I could help with that. He's Steve Alford, New Mexico head coach, joining us. Dan Patrick show. Do you see? Could you see yourself being a pro coach? Um, you know, I don't say never. Um, you know, because I watch the pro game. I, I love watching the the best athletes in the world playing. So that's a lot of fun on downtime to turn on an NBA game instead of you know my whole life in the winter revolves around college basketball. I like everything about college basketball, though, from the program building and, you know, the, from the academic side and, and teaching. You know, we basically get young men and we got to turn them into men in a quick four years. And that's always been fun. That's something that I've always enjoyed. But uh, I do enjoy watching the pro game and just watching the best players play. What's the one thing that your players will do that you find yourself – maybe channeling coach Knight when you did this as a player is there anything where you go oh my gosh I, i'm, I'm I saying to, what coach I, Knight does I, I talked to coach Knight two days ago and i got him on the phone i said coach this is steve alford and, and he basically wanted to know if i'd had an uh, outer body experience because he said i've watched your basketball team and they really guard and i don't know how they do that so <laughs> So I would, I would say, <laughs> I would say our team does something that uh, I didn't do very well, and that's guard. How did you? Because he had to yell at you all the time for your lack of defense. It, it, was it a lack of defense? <laughs> was there a lack of effort there, Steve? Because you were a great scorer. <laughs> no, I, I, I would say uh, even he would say I, I provided the effort. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, I've learned in coaching, you know, through twenty two years of it now that. Um, you know, I, I, I would say that I, I was the leader and he knew I was tough enough to handle things. And I've learned those same lessons that there are some guys you can get on and they respond. And then there's some guys you can't get on. So you got to get on the other guy through him. <laughs> and that's just part of that's part of coaching and, and understanding those things as a player as well. So, um, but. He's also right, too. I wasn't a very good defender. <laughs> Wait a minute. He yelled at you because he couldn't yell at somebody else who may have made the mistake, so then you caught his wrath? Well, I think that happens. I, I do think that happens in coaching, and if you're asking me tricks that I've picked up you know, along the way, that's probably one of them as well. And you grow up in the state of Indiana, Indiana basketball being back. Now, as a fan, as a grad, how important is that to see Indiana be successful? It's very important, uh, and it's a lot of fun. And, and Coach Crean and his staff, I know Coach Buckley, he was on my staff for a year at Iowa and very close friends, and they've done an incredible job getting that back. Um, as I tell people, the landscape is back to normal uh, when you have Indiana number one in the country. So uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Dean Garrett lives uh, in Vegas. I know he was just out there. Todd Meyer was just out. So it's good that you know the alumni have always followed it, and we've always paid attention to what's going on at Indiana, and it's a lot of fun seeing them back being a top-10 program. Well, good to visit with you, Steve, and uh, congratulations on a great year. Good luck in the tournament uh, against Harvard. I appreciate it, Dan. Thanks for having me on. All right, Steve Olford, New Mexico head coach.